Savannah with Safari Savvy Animal Adventures. We take our amazing animal ambassadors all around to our local schools, libraries, and retirement homes, as well as birthday parties. These are a few of our animals that we bring to our shows. So let's start off here. I've got some stuff hidden. So our first animal ambassador has been on uh, local TV uh, three times. She's been on NBC, she's been on ABC, and the old network uh, Comcast. She is venomous. Although she is venomous, she uses her hair as a weapon. Imagine you can use your hair as a weapon and flick it at a predator that was after you. And if it got on them, it could cause blindness, and it could even make you really, really itchy. Only temporarily blind, though, I promise. This is Rosie, the rose hair tarantula. She is nine years old, and she's been an ambassador here for the last five years. She has eight legs, and she has two arms in the front that are known as petty pals. In the back, these are her spinnerets, and that's where her spider silk comes from. Spider silk is one of the strongest materials known to man. It's actually stronger than Kevlar. Kevlar is what we make bulletproof vests out of. So if we were to take her spider silk here and make a vest out of it, it would be bulletproof. But that would take a really long time. So, scientists have actually created spider goats. That's right, spider goats. Spider goats are real, you guys. They are goats that are genetically engineered to have spider silk protein in their milk. Pretty crazy. Take a look at this pretty girl. That's Rosie the rose hair tarantula. She is a Chilean rose hair tarantula. She is nine years old and she can live about 15 to 20 years because she is a female. Males usually only live about two to five years. Bye Rosie. Another amazing animal ambassador here at Safari Savvy Animal Adventures is another venomous animal. Please do not let this animal chew on you for about 10 minutes because it might dissolve your skin a little bit. Because this animal is not a constrictor, it does have rear fang venomous qualities and that is actually like stomach acid, it's going to help them digest their food. This is a western hog nose. Her name is Hoggy and she's approximately about two, maybe going on to three years old. Hoggy here, like I said, is a rear fanged venomous snake so she'd have to chew 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 on you she is a drama queen in the wild if she were to see you in the wild she would hood up like a cobra and rattle her tail hoping to scare you off now if that didn't scare you off she would actually play dead she would roll over and she'd go eh, i'm dead she has one more trick up her sleeve if that doesn't work wait she doesn't have sleeves she actually <laughs> can regurgitate she goes bleh, bleh. She is a frog eater in the wild, so she would regurgitate a dead frog, which would probably not be very pleasant smelling. So, she's playing dead, she smells like a dead frog, just leave her alone. These guys are endemic to the United States, which makes them pretty awesome. The Easterns get a little larger than the Western Hognose. That's Hoggy the Hognose. Bye, Hoggy. All right, we have a baby here at Safari Savvy. And this baby is actually the fourth largest tortoise species in the world. It uh, will live up to 75 to 100 years and get approximately 30 to 40 pounds, upwards of 50 pounds. Known as giant cat toys in Africa, this is the leopard tortoise. They do protect themselves by going into their shell. And uh, contrary to what a lot of people believe, these guys can actually feel through their shell. So if you scratch their shell, they can actually feel through it. A good test for you at home is to pinch your nail. And you should be able to feel pinching your nail because you have nerve endings under your nail and they have nerve endings under their shell. Their shell is actually fused to their spine. So like I said, giant cat toys, if these guys were being uh, attacked by a big cat, they would hide in their shell. The cats would bat them around and usually get bored and leave them. These guys are super cute and this little guy is about, I'd say about six, seven months old. This is Leroy the leopard, or leopard tortoise. So, a local gentleman by the name of Gary was um, walking, I think he was in a park locally, and he stumbled upon this egg. 
and Gary took that egg home and he incubated it. His mom was not very happy with him. <laughs> she thought that he incubated a rattlesnake egg. Luckily for us, it is not a rattlesnake. Whoa! It's a super fast baby black racer. They will mimic rattlesnakes and try to false bite you. There you go. I got bit by a snake, you guys. So they will rattle their tail when they get scared, and he is trying to poop on me and still trying to bite me here. So we named him after the gentleman that found him. This is little Gary. Hi, little Gary. We attack the camera. Black racers are amazing to have in the wild because they actually will eat venomous snakes like rattlesnakes. So they're beneficial to have in your yard. And they are not quick to bite, but if they do bite like their babies because they're scared, uh, they do not actually um, hold on or anything like that. It's called a false bite. So I don't feel anything and they never actually break the skin. That's little Gary. And little Gary hatched out on June 23rd. So little Gary is about a week old now. Pretty cool. Bye, little Gary. So that was a little snake. Let's bring it up to size. Oh, oh, okay. Out of my magic box here. This is Roxy. Roxy is a Colombian red tail boa. She eats jumbo rats every two weeks, usually one jumbo rat every two weeks. And she has been an animal ambassador here for the last three years. She is very friendly and very curious. She is a boa constrictor, and the boa constrictors will get to be about 10 to 12 feet in length. Although, when she gets 10 feet in length, my insurance will not cover me anymore, and she will be retired to live her life, life of luxury here. So she's pretty awesome. So these guys actually have residual legs, or they have hooks at their vent. That's the opening at their tail. And they have two hooks. They actually have nails on them, and males will use them for breeding. They do have an iridescent quality to them. These guys are very very strong and when she gets over 10 feet one of the reasons why we don't keep her um, for, well we'll keep her but why we won't um, use her for shows anymore is because it'll then take at least two people to handle her because she is so strong she has a really beautiful pink hue to the under of her body and I'll give you a closer look this is Roxy the Colombian red tail boa Whoa! Whoa! Knocking things over. All right, Roxy, we'll see you later. Roxy's very energetic there. When we travel with Roxy, she goes into a cotton bag, and this is actually to help her. Um, snakes have poor vision. They don't see very well with their eyes. They see with heat pits in their face. And so when we travel, it can make her nervous because she doesn't know where she is. And she actually prefers to be in her hide. So this kind of mimics her hide at home. She can breathe just fine in the cotton bag because it is cotton. We'll put her up. Bye, Roxy. Okay, so one that's been sitting here for a while, I don't know if you guys noticed, this is a panther chameleon. And these are endemic to Madagascar. And this guy was actually born at Safari Savvy. Um, they take six months to 14 months to incubate in their egg. I actually hatched his, uh, his mother from an egg as well. He looks a lot like his father. Uh, males will have these amazing, almost Skittle-like colors. They'll have 
greens and reds. He can get blues on him. He will brighten and darken his colors um, to attract a female or to compete with a male. And uh, these guys are actually solitary creatures, so they do not like to live in groups. They'll actually come together to mate, and then they will separate immediately. The females are different colors. They actually are more um, lavenders and cream colors. And when they're ovulating, when they're actually ready to mate with the males, they'll turn a really striking bright pink to try to attract the males. This is my rhino iguana, or one of my rhino iguanas. And she is an amazing animal ambassador, very, very friendly. And she loves bananas, so we brought her a banana. Let's see if we can get her up here. She can hold on. What do you think, Mama? Whoa, good girl. Very nice. She did a very good job. You guys can give her applause at home. Want a banana? Oh, she's loving the banana today. So she is a rock iguana. This is Pearl. Pearl is a rock iguana and they can live upwards of 80 years. The oldest rock iguana that I know in captivity is Henry and he's owned by John Benz and he is 54 years old. And rock iguanas tend to be very affectionate lizards. I think they're highly intelligent and they definitely bond with their owners. I'm excited to keep her at the, um, at the zoo here for the rest of her life and she's only about three and a half years old right now. She has a third eye on top of her head and this is not an eyeball. It's like a camera lens. It can see light and shadow so she can see if there's a predator overhead or she can see where she could bask because she does like it very hot. They are endemic to or from the Dominican Republic. And in the Dominican, they're actually ground-dwelling iguanas, and they actually like to hide in burrows. They eat a lot of cacti. Um, every rock iguana is actually isolated to their own island on the Caribbean island or in the Caribbean island. So every island has their variation of the rock iguana. These guys, as a group of lizards, is actually the most endangered group of lizards on Earth. Good pearl. Pearl's super, super sweet. Pearl likes to eat bananas collard greens, a mustard greens. She likes Missouri tortoise chow. She likes to eat uh, a little bit of fruit in the summer. She likes watermelon. She likes grapes and bananas. She eats cactus. There's a lot of things that in, are included in her diet. Um, some people do occasionally feed um, protein like super worms to these guys, but we don't do it because they get a lot of protein from their diet, uh, from the vegetation that they eat. They also eat a lot of things like hibiscus flowers. So we'll say goodbye. Oh, she's so sweet. Goodbye, Pearl. Now, when we started out doing programs, we started doing specifically reptile programs. And since then, it's grown. So we have a giant Flemish rabbit. We have a French Rex rabbit, which is actually a uh, fuzzy, almost curly haired. It feels like velveteen, so I like to say it's like a velveteen rabbit. We also have guinea pigs and fancy rats. And we just got this amazing animal ambassador that we're super excited about. This is Bambi. And he looks like a cross between a deer, a jackrabbit, and a guinea pig. He's actually more closely related to a guinea pig. They are the fourth largest rodent in the world. Again, they come from Patagonia. So they're found um, throughout uh, South America, more in the Andes mountain region. This is a baby, and the baby, whoa, is still drinking a bottle. So this is Bambi, the baby Patagonian cabbie. They love to chew, so he gives me my haircuts here. And Bambi loves his bottle. They're actually one of the longest nursing uh, rodents. They actually will nurse for 75 days. They are um, monogamous and will actually mate for life. Although they live in groups in caves, uh, no two adult males will actually inhabit the cave at the same time. They'll leave the babies down there to be guarded and protected, and the moms will take turns going down to feed the babies. They do make little weak, weak, weak sounds and to try to get attention from the nursing moms, and she actually has to learn her own baby's uh, sound so that um, she doesn't actually accidentally feed another baby. So this is Bambi here, and Bambi, when he's full grown, will be 20 to 30 pounds, will be able to uh, jump six feet in the air, 
and will be able to run about 20 miles per hour, which is pretty crazy. He likes to do loops in the backyard. He runs and runs and skips and hops and he does little leg kicks. He's pretty fun to have around. I hope you enjoyed seeing some of the amazing animal ambassadors at Safari Savvy Animal Adventures. If you'd like to uh, comment if we've actually seen you or been to your school or maybe you had a, us come to your birthday party and tell us what was your favorite animal. If you haven't seen us in person, what was your favorite animal today? Was it Patagonian Cabbie? Was it the awesome panther chameleon? The giant boa Roxy? Or the really cool tarantula? Let us know with comments and please follow, like, and share for more amazing animal content at Safari Savvy Amazing Animal Adventures.